Good morning, Titans. Today's Friday, December 7th. I'm Brooke Carrick. And I'm Antonio Labermont. How you doing? Let's get started with today's show. If you're thinking about trying out for varsity, JV, or freshman baseball this upcoming spring, then come to the mandatory meeting in Mr. Valdivia's room, A203, on Wednesday, December 12th at 2.45 p.m. Important information will be given for this season, so you must attend. Sophomore Allie Kiger talked to Brooke and Sean Henry about her efforts to make sure that we don't forget about the soldiers overseas. You know, I'm in Harry, charge of right? letters to the soldiers. Um, you guys can come to the student store to fill one out. Just thank them for their service for our country and wish them a happy holidays or a Merry Christmas. Today is the last day to fill one out, and they would really appreciate your support, so come out and fill one out. Alex Ray's car was stolen from Titan Drive during school. Matt Hoffman and Julian Price have the story. Students may have heard a rumor about a car being stolen from the student parking lot. Well, there was a car stolen, but it was taken from Titan Drive, not the student parking lot. Sometime between the hours of 7.45 a.m. and 2.35 p.m., senior Alex Ray's 1995 Honda Civic was taken. Uh, it got just stolen Monday, December 3rd, out on the street of the student parking lot. I was walking out from uh, school at the end, and I thought it was a joke. Like, I thought someone was kidding with me, so I was kind of shocked, and then I asked my friend for a ride to my house, and then I realized it wasn't at my house, so I got really mad, but that was pretty much it. But I got over it because it could be a lot worse. So, I mean, it's kind of sad, but it could be a lot worse than it is. Uh, I spent like four grand on it. I lowered it. I put an aftermarket uh, exhaust kit. I put rims on it. I switched out the tail lights. Stuff like that. Uh, well, I hope I get my car back. If not, I'll get money for it with my insurance, but hopefully I just get it back soon. According to the recent data from the FBI's National Crime Information Center, a 1995 Honda Civic is the most stolen car in America. If Frey's car was just taken for a joyride, it could turn up any day. However, it could be in a shop somewhere, and the CHP and Sacramento Sheriff's Department are taking the matter seriously. The consequences for theft of a motor vehicle in the state of California, it's going to depend on, on your, the person's history, their criminal, you know, their criminal history, their age. There's a lot of factors. If the person's a juvenile and it's a first-time offense, he will probably get probation, but if, he, if, it, if the offender is a hardened criminal with multiple strikeable offenses, he could potentially get a three strike or a lot of time in prison, and it would range anything in between. Um, theft of a motor vehicle, absent any violence, is still considered a property crime and can be charged anywhere from a misdemeanor all the way up to a felony. When Ray had his car stolen, it was on Titan Drive and not in the student lot. Ray says he won't be parking on Titan Drive anymore and instead in the student lot. Sheriff Michael Pai assures that the student lot is safe. Well, I won't say it's not monitored enough. I mean, cars come and go from school parking lots all day long. You know, there's a school resource, resource officer on campus, but he's not specifically watching the parking lot, and, and it's an unmarked, you know, unmonitored parking lot because students come and go all day. It's also public parking for visitors to the school, so it's, it's not odd to see a car drive out at any time. So absent a person being out there and seeing suspicious behavior, or the school resource officer or the campus monitors happen to just be there, it's, it's going to be pretty hard to curtail. Gray hopes to get his car back soon so he can get to work and school with no problems. If you have any information about his stolen car, please call 443-HELP. That's 443-HELP. Reporting for your Channel 5 Titan TV News, I'm Matt Hoffman. Seniors, there are still a few CSU campuses still accepting applications for fall 2013. Bakersfield, East Bay, Dominguez Hills, Humboldt State, Maritime, and Fresno. If you have any questions, please see Mr. Sandeep Panu. Have you ever seen CSI? Interested in that area of work? There's a special class here on campus for the subject. Batch Dosanj and Anna Molina filed a story. People take forensic science because of shows like CSI. However, they are not all alike. So a lot of people take uh, forensic science because they like the show CSI. And while CSI is somewhat accurate, it can be very misleading. Um, each show is done in an hour. They're able to solve like three crimes. Uh, DNA tests come back in uh, 30 minutes versus five weeks. So forensic science, we talk about the differences between uh, what you actually see on CSI and what actually gets done in the crime lab. There's not always evidence. It always doesn't get solved that quickly. But it's at at least uh, getting a lot of interest. Forensic science is the study of law applied to crime scenes. Students are finding this opportunity very interesting that they get to learn what real people do in the field. I got to find out all the lies the media sends to the public, like the CSI and the bones about a lot of that stuff isn't as realistic as you think. 
and this class shows you how it really works in the real world. And I like the teacher, a really good teacher. This class overall is just interesting. It's a science class. We learn about the criminal minds and how a criminal thinks when he's committing crimes. The class has recently taken a field trip to UC Davis and have gotten an overview of the program. I took the class to UC Davis to tour their graduate forensics program. It was amazing because the kids actually got to see the labs that graduate programs are, um, or graduate students are doing in order to learn how to be a CSI uh, investigator. Uh, the program was amazing. They got to see DNA, they got to see ballistics, and a cool new computer program. The kids also got to tour the campus and see what it was like to uh, interview college students, go to the library. It was an overall amazing. The students were very excited to go on the field trip. Davis field trip was really fun. We learned about the UC Davis forensics program they have and about all the people that have gone through it and where they are in their life now. Field trip to UC Davis was really fun. We learned a lot of stuff. We, um, we learned about uh, what the forensics department there does and how they test things like they showed us how to like test DNA and um, bullets and like match the bullets up and stuff like that so it was really fun. This is Annalisa Molina signing off for your Channel 5 Titan TV News. Interested in trying out for the girls softball team? Shania Minor and Anna Molina have more information. Okay so um, anybody interested in trying out for softball in the spring we're having a meeting, a short meeting on December 11th. Um, basically we're going to meet about 2.50 in my classroom, which is S204. We're going to talk about the conditioning schedule and um, you know when tryouts is, but we're going to actually start conditioning in January when we come back from Christmas break. So um, anybody that's interested, even if you're playing basketball, we want to see you so that we can kind of see the numbers that we're going to have coming out. But we're looking forward to it. See you on Tuesday. Last night was the first of three shows of the Winter Dance Show. Antonio and Medita Majanovic talked to Miss Robin Solomon about how the show went. Well, I'm really proud of all the kids that were involved in the dance show and all of the students that, um, it being their final, they came out and from Monday all the way through um, tonight uh, got ready for their opening night. And I can't wait for Friday and Saturday. I know they're going to be awesome. So I'm so proud of all the kids involved. Now here's sports with Nikki Weil. This is Sports Corner. Good morning, Titans. This is Nikki Wild with your weekly Sports Corner. On Wednesday, the varsity girls basketball team went out to Vacaville to beat the Vacaville High Bulldogs 64-46. The varsity boys basketball team is currently entered in the Gridley Invitational Basketball Tournament at Gridley High School, which started yesterday and continues until Saturday. The Titans fell to the Bullard High Knights on Thursday, 65-60. Well, that's all the sports I have for you this week. Have a great weekend, Titans, and now back to Brooke and Antonio. This is Sports Corner. So, Brooke, are you going to the dance show tonight? Actually, yes, I will be. Well, Titans, have a great weekend. And don't forget to tune in on Wednesday. Bye! See you guys.